Let's, we're going to give you a hand. Thank you. All right. Speaking of new generations, speaking of peace fellows, aren't we so fortunate with the Rotarian Action Group for Peace, which how many have heard of the Rotarian Action Group for Peace? So let's learn a little bit about the Rotarian Action Group for Peace by meeting the operations director who's going to tell you about it and inspire you. Her name is Reem Gunay. All right, go Reem. Hi everyone, uh, I'm very happy and honored to be with you all here today um, and I would like to share a little bit about myself, my journey, my organization and the power of art in inspiring peace because it's just appropriate giving the hub and Jerry's talent and um, all the experiences I've been through. Um, so my name is Reem Gunaim. I was born and raised in Palestine. Uh, recently, I moved to Portland, Oregon, and I started working for the Rotarian Action Group for Peace as their director of operations. I want to tell you briefly what does what the Rotarian Action Group for Peace uh, do in relation to peace building within Rotary. Um, the Rotarian Action Group for Peace is a semi-autonomous organization that works under the umbrella of Rotary International. It empowers, en encourages, and engages Rotarians and peace building activities um, around the Rotary International Network. Uh, the Rotarian Action Group for Peace uh, provides different platforms uh, that allows, and spaces that allows for Rotarians to meet and engage and participate. Um, for example, on our website, there is a place where you can, Rotarians can post their Rotary projects and advocate for their support. Uh, we also provide spaces like the hub rotating around the country. We attend conferences and have our booth there to engage with the Rotarians. And we're always welcoming your phone calls, your interaction, meeting with you and getting to know what you do about peace. So that's the Rotarian Action Group for Peace in a nutshell. I invite you to explore their, the website and join us as members. We will be honored to have you be part of our network and share your peace building uh, work so, back to my story. Before I came to Portland, Oregon, I was um, in North Carolina, which, which I consider my American hometown. I came there as a Rotary Peace Fellow. Um, I studied at the at Duke UNC Rotary Peace Center. I studied city and regional planning with a focus on um, economic development and also international peace and conflict resolution. Um, after that, and during my professional um, and life um, and education, I've worked in different regions around the world, uh, the Pacific, uh, including the Pacific, the Middle East, Europe, and now the U.S. I've met a lot of wonderful people, and um, I've gone through amazing experiences. All of them taught me a lesson that is so important to me and to my heart. I realized that what connects us together is much more powerful and meaningful than what separates us. And that lesson that all the wonderful people I met during my life taught me made me realize my personal mission, which is a mission to build mutual understanding that revolves around compassion, empowers individuality, and embraces difference in a positive light. Um, Giving the Peace Hub tour and Jerry singing, I'd like to share one of those experiences with you in depth. When I was in, in Fiji, I encountered a group of artists, singers. Um, they're, they're called Voices in Transition. They sang about peace. And basically, they utilized art to navigate through a journey of hardship. And through that navigation, beauty transcended and affected the hearts of the community there, including my heart. I was so inspired. At the time, I was reflecting at the power of art in navigating through hardship and creating platforms for peace building. Um, a Palestinian from Gaza, actually a refugee from Gaza, his name Muhammad Asaf, won the Arab Idol. 
that happened in 2013, as I was reflecting in Fiji about my personal experience. Muhammad's story is fascinating, it's empowering, and it's beautiful, and I'd like to share that with you. Muhammad went from Gaza to audition in Egypt, that was the closest space for him to audition. In his way from Gaza to Egypt, he stayed on the checkpoints for two days. By the time he got to the auditions, it was too late. The numbers were gone, and the hotel was closed. In desperation and sadness, he called his mom. So he told her, I think it's over. She told him, no, it's not. You're Palestinian, you're strong, you're resilient. If you have to climb a wall, you climb that wall. He did, otherwise he'll be in trouble because <laughs> mothers, Palestinian mothers are tough and she wouldn't take that as an excuse. So <laughs> he did. Um, when he entered the hotel lobby, he realized that the numbers for participants were gone. So when I, so in, in refuge, he started singing because that's how he, he knows how to let go. And his beautiful voice uh, attracted another participant, a Palestinian participant, um, in, in coincidence. Um, and he approached him and he told him, Muhammad, your voice is so beautiful um, and I'd like to give you my number. I think you will get to the finals and I don't think I'll make it, so I'm so happy to give you my number. Muhammad, with so much gratefulness, took that number. Actually, he didn't just get to the finals, he won the Arab Idol. Muhammad's journey wasn't just an individual journey for a Palestinian, a talented Palestinian. It was a journey for the entire community that united Palestinians in hope, in beauty, and in hope. Um, Personally, my, me and my family and my um, neighbors and my community, we all cheered for Muhammad. We all cried when he won. And people marched the streets celebrating joy and art in the form of peace. Um, Muhammad is a true ambassador of Palestine and a true voice of Palestine, a voice of peace. Um, he's now actually the ambassador for the United Nations in the honor of representing the refugee cause, um, an ambassador of peace. So um, that's the story of Muhammad. And I was sharing that earlier with Jerry this weekend. And he told me, he asked me to share my own poem that I wrote about peace and conflict and war when I was um, six years old. It's very personal, but I, he encouraged me to do so. And I will share it with all of you. Uh, before I share my poem, I'd like to reflect a little bit on it with you. Uh, I wrote this poem when I was six years old, and I had the chance to look back again at it when I was 22 or 23 years old. When I read it as an adult, I was very saddened and actually shocked by how my childhood was actually raped by conflict. I didn't, I recognized that I didn't live a fair childhood like all other children. And I thought that was so unfair, so wrong. And I thought to myself, I have to do something about this. I don't want more children to feel the way I felt when I was six years old. And um, at the time, you know, the Rotary Peace Fellowship Program was there presented to me. Um, and I, latched into it and I became a Rotary Peace Fellow with a determination to bring a peace building and contribute to um, a change in our world that would allow for a peaceful environment for our children around the world. Um, so here is my poem. I titled my poem as My Heart Aches. I am from stone, I am from fire. I am a war without a victory. I am the uprising of the free. I am a traveling bird. I am a resilient wound. I am a gauze wrapped around their wounded hands. I am a bleeding hand. I walk, but I do not know my way. I don't know my destination. I don't know my home. I don't know my family. 
I am the youngest example of Palestine. Um, I'd like to end by saying that in my research at Duke and CP's fellow um, SHEP program, I studied Peace Fellows and I recognized a huge gap in the recruitment of Peace Fellows from conflict zones. And I would encourage you all to support um, an effort to recruit more potential Peace Fellows from uh, areas affected by conflict. That's my mission and I invite you all to support me in doing that. Thank you so much.